Cheers. I don't know if it was a miracle, but it was a heck of a play. And we're joined now by Abilene Christian, play-by-play man extraordinaire and good friend of the show, Grant Boone. Grant, well, how are you, sir? We took the highway into the danger zone last night against UCLA. Yeah. But you know what? Saturday night, you know, we were we were the top gun. Yeah. It was uh it was brother, it was a it was a heck of a run. And uh we first we'd like to welcome you to the fourteen three upset club. Uh it is uh, mm. it is I think I wanna say there's is it twenty two now, fourteen? Yeah, that we were the twenty second. Yeah, I think yeah, we were the twenty second, yeah. Uh, you should so, call it the pie club three, three, one, four, you know? Yeah, we could, although if get it because the, of right. the math and all of that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, I, if, although, talk. Don't, don't answer now. Just, just think about it. If it was a, if it was a pie club though, Grant, I would, I would eat all of the, all of the profits. That's true. No doubt all that. the E. Yeah. So, uh, you know, tell me about this, man. It, it going in, I, I was telling everyone that would listen that this was a terrible matchup for Texas. Um, yeah. you know, ACU and, and you and I had talked, I didn't actually get to see y'all play up close and personal because demons and, and ACU didn't play. We didn't see you in the tournament. We got bounced before y'all ever played. And so, right. uh, I didn't really get to see much of you, but in talking to you, we obviously chat during the course of the season and, and I obviously. noticed your, I noticed your turnovers force numbers. And I, the thing I'd asked you was, is this a full court thing or is this a half court thing? And you're like, no, we just turn people over in the half court. And that's right. immediately what stuck out to me is it's one thing if you're pressing and turning people over, but when you're forcing turnovers in the, in the half court and what we saw ACU do against Texas, that's a nightmare matchup for a team that like Texas that, that struggles with turnovers. And so I loved your matchup going in. Yeah, and and I did too, and that's why you know in in the in the heat of the moment and in you know the days the forty eight hours after when so many people were saying unbelievable and uh, you know and and I, I I certainly knew what they meant, but you know and of course I'm a I'm a word nerd uh, among other ways in which I'm a nerd, but um, for me I wanted to make sure. That, that I that I specified. I, I don't. It wasn't unbelievable that we won. Right. What was unbelievable was the thing you experienced in 2006. You know, it, all of the, the 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 scene around it, the the, the pageantry and the, the 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 number of times the shot was replayed, and 15 years later, people still remember it, and and. Uh, and 30 years from now, they'll still remember the big shot that, that the Demons hit to, to beat Iowa back in, 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 o, in 06. And, and so that part was unbelievable. For us, especially, uh, you know, at Northwestern State, uh, and certainly, you know, LSU fans, it's hard to appreciate how new this is to us. We mm-hmm. were eight years ago, we were Division Two and a bad Division Two men's basketball program. One of the statistically lowest ranked men's basketball programs in the country in division two. And then we went D one and, you know, Northwestern state and, and pretty much everyone else had their way with us in those uh, first couple of years. And then we kept getting better and better. And Joe Golding kept building the program and he tried to build it with four year guys like Mike McConaughey's done. So often you sprinkle in the Juco when, whenever your uh, roster gets imbalanced with, you know, different, not enough of one class, for example, but um, so, yeah, it that it was it was believable that we could win for the for the reasons you said, and and, and as we as we've discussed many times, you know, through the, and, and everyone's discussed basketball, and I think football is like this, um, and I think those are the maybe the two sports in which it's most notable. Uh, it's it's about matchups, and so if Texas played UCLA, I'm not sure UCLA would have beaten them. They might have. But I think it's very possible Texas could have beaten UCLA. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe would have beaten UCLA because of the matchups. Because UCLA would have really struggled, I think, to defend the likes of Greg Brown and Jericho Sims on the inside. They're, UCLA's not big. But we aren't either, relatively speaking, in terms of uh, you know elite high major basketball. So um, it, the matchup was favorable for us. We still had to go do it. Uh, and then, sure enough, we did it. Yeah, and I, I'm curious because 
the the 06 demons had as you mentioned that sort of iconic moment what we in Natchitoches yeah. refer to as the shot it, yeah. it's it's not as sexy when it's two free throws even though it's as pre- i would argue more pressure packed in that moment for Joe Pleasant than it ever was for Jermaine Wallace because Jermaine Wallace is acting on instinct in the moment Joe Pleasant sitting over there during a timeout he's got to think about this mm-hmm. He knows he's not a statistically a tremendous free throw shooter. And so he's right. sitting over there having to consider all of this and then step to the line when everything is quiet and, and all you have is yourself to think about. So you don't necessarily get that iconic moment, but I'd argue that what Joe Pleasant went through was, was tougher than what Jermaine Wallace went through, just not quite as sexy to the viewing audience. Well, I think to your, I would say what both of them did was was remarkable, sure, uh, and and will and will live forever in in the uh, you know in the you know in their universities you know war. Um, it's if you start talking about great moments, uh, great shots that that happen, Tyus Edney, you know, goes coast to coast. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, you get, uh, you get Bryce Drew, now the coach at Grand Canyon, right. you know, he hits the shot for Valpo, uh, that Jermaine, uh, you know, what he did for Northwestern state. That is, that is a, it's a shot. It's an easy thing to queue up if you're a producer putting a montage together. Mm-hmm. So from that standpoint, I, I would agree, but I would also agree that with what you say, that, that the weight uh, uh, the, the weight and the weight, A I T and E I G H T, yeah. were, were both maybe maybe uh, maybe added an an element of difficulty that few will ever experience. And then if you're uh, a guy like Joe, who you know whose dad Anthony was a D lineman on the on the Patriots' first two Super Bowl teams with Tom Brady in the early 2000s, uh, I, I and and he and you've got his personality. I don't think you. I don't think the moment was too big. I mean, when you when your dad's got a couple of Super Bowl rings, I think you just kind of think, well, I mean, that's what you just you just go and you just play, and then if it works, it works, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm, if he missed it, I don't think it would have been uh, because he was scared of the moment. It would have been because he's not a super uh, statistically great free throw shooter. But to stand up there and make those two men. Um, you know, you're right. It it, it doesn't. It, it's not the kind of thing you can you can rack up in a in a montage quite as uh, quite as easily. But then for him to intercept the inbounds and go running down. I mean, he, you know, and I, I don't even, I don't think he was running toward the camera per se. He might have been, but the that moment, mm-hmm. you know, that that's what'll get replayed. Actually, I yes. think yes, it it'll will be him intercepting it and running toward the camera and throwing the ball up. And yeah, I get goosebumps. I mean. You know, I mean, again, I know a ton of your listeners are are LSU fans, and and um, you had your own unbelievable moment last year, and that was so awesome. It, but when you're just a little dude, you know, as Joe Golding says, a little old ACU, and, and you've never even sniffed something like this. You had me on a couple of years ago, the, the day we played Kentucky. Yeah. We were down eight nothing and eighteen three, and and it was. It was never really a game. They had it was one NBA lottery guy after another for Kentucky, and it wasn't about game plan. It was about can we just survive? And we were down twenty six at halftime and lost by thirty five and uh, all of that. So for us to be in that moment, and and you know we, we've been eligible for three NCAA tournaments since going Division one, and we've been to two of them, and we, and we're one and two, and we played <laughs> Kentucky, Texas, and UCLA. Yeah. I mean, it just. Be well, me. and and you mentioned that first one because I, I think there's something to that in the fact that you were there just a couple of years ago. It wasn't like you know the demons haven't been to the tournament since 2013. So if they go this right. year, they go next year, whatever. It's a group of kids that have no idea about NSU going to the tournament. You still had some kids that that were were there for that run, and so you yeah. you got to and you mentioned this. The, this go around was not the oh my god look at us we're in the tournament I can't believe it this is amazing this was much more of a business trip for you, you guys it was but I'll tell you this too and this goes back to our original um, you know conversation after we got Kenny Loggins out of the way um, it, it was it was it's still about matchups and you know you can say it was about of, you know, Joe Golding, looking back, says it was, you know, in some ways it was a vacation. And uh, you know what it's like having called uh, 
several NCAA, several Southland Conference tournament championships mm-hmm. with the Demons. Winning the, your conference tournament is a humongous deal, and it's it's almost like when you win a PGA Tour event. Yes, you've won a tour event. That's huge, but it means you're going to the Masters, right? right? And so right. They, it, it, it's the double whammy of it all. So, um, but 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 if we played a Kentucky team that was loaded with lottery guys like two years ago, we could have said, well, this isn't, you know, w- w- this is a business trip. And, and there's a decent chance we still would have lost by a good margin. Right. So, um, b- because that it's, ju- it's, it's just about the matchups, our level of basketball typically wins games in the tournament, whether it's Northwestern state or, or Oral Roberts or Abilene Christian or whomever, you typically win with one of two things, a system, so when Princeton beat UCLA, they didn't do it because they had great players. They had a, an unbelievable system with mm-hmm. Pete Carrill. Or you have a, uh, a, an unbelievable, play, and even I, I would argue Mike's system is yeah. so hard to, to, McConaughey is so hard to, to prepare for. Yeah. It's, it's almost an NBA style in a way through the years. Um, and, and it's just so different than what you normally get. But, but, but you know, or, or you have the Acemus of Oral Roberts, who's the, the stud. Who can even even North Texas when they beat Purdue? I was at that game uh, at Lucas Oil on Friday night. Man, those those guys, uh, and of course that's Conference USA, which is a, a, a few notches up from the Southland Conference. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but they've got guards who can go not only create but then finish. We've got guards who can create but then generally dish or or, or distribute it, and uh, not as not as many guys who can go and finish. Uh, and we've just got guys who dive all over the floor, and that, that's just the way we play. So we're defense first, uh, and, and it was our system that beat Texas. And yeah. so, yes, yes, we were, we were, um, we, we thought differently than two years ago, but a big part of it is that, A, we were a 14 seed, not a 15, or uh, a as we were two years ago. And, and, and I think that's a big deal. Yeah. And then secondly, um, and of course, we lost to Central Arkansas, which had really had, had a really a, a dismal season, but they upset us at the end of the season. We could have been, I, I don't, I'm positive we couldn't have been a 13 if we'd have beaten Central Arkansas and done everything else we had done. Um, but then maybe did that loss help us do what we went on to do? Possibly. You know, it refocuses you. So I would just say, I don't want to diminish, you know, Joe, Joe Golding says, we want to be truth tellers in our program. And so sometimes that says that, that it may sound like you're self-deprecating or whatever. At, at the end of the day, that Kentucky team would always, two years ago, always have been near impossible for an ACU team to beat. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. The matchup. Is, we're, we're back to what you said at the beginning. The matchup is what did it. Yeah. And, it's, and that's why when Northwestern State saw that Iowa was the team they were matched up against, they all started salivating because Iowa was a slow mm. place, p- slow paced, not super athletic, plotting kind of team. There you and, go. And we were able to yep. speed them up and and ultimately do that. I, also interesting to me because you know the demons got down seventeen with eight and a half minutes left, and they had this amazing comeback. You guys just basically played Texas off their feet the entire game. You know there was never this sort of oh okay here's Texas taking control, kind of what we expected. The little guys hung around for a while. Texas never ran away from you at any point. So, no, I, you know, I find that didn't. also interesting because I think more than anything, that proves you belong. That every time Texas would would try to make a run, you would answer or you'd get stops. I mean, you went, what, seven minutes without a point in the first half and Texas never pulled away. Uh, you know, to yeah, me, that's, that's, just, I, I that's indicative. That's- I, I think I think you're onto something there. I'm not sure I've thought about it exactly in those terms, uh, but, but I think you're right. Um, I do think that says something. And maybe it goes back to the Joe versus Jermaine. Um, both are unbelievably difficult. What each did, uh, our guy Joe Pleasant and the Demons Jermaine. But um, uh, you know, it, it's one thing when you're down 17. There's a sense in which you let it rip, yeah. and and the demons in that it, it, not just that year, but almost every year under Mike, uh, are are equipped to make big runs uh, offense because they can they can just flat out get hot. And when you see two or three threes go in as the other team, you think, dang, you know, it, it, when is it going to stop? Yeah. With us, I think it's also and, and so on one hand, it's hard to come. It's incredibly hard to come from 17 down to win any game, no matter what time of the game it yeah. is. So that's incredibly hard, but I do agree that that when you play 
close or with the lead for 40 minutes, that adds an element of stress and difficulty to it. The, the, the only moment that, that, we, that, that I thought was a little dicey was, uh, you're right, we went a total of nine minutes, final 7-13 of the first half and the first you know, almost, almost 90, or 90 seconds or plus of the second half without a single point, a field goal or, or, or a free throw. And, and they scored two quick buckets to start the second half. And so with 19 minutes to go, we're down nine. Now, nine's obviously doable. But, but it, it felt a little like, okay, we really, really, really need a bucket here. If it goes to 11 or 12, you know, now you're getting into really difficult territory for mm-hmm. a team, unlike those demon teams, uh, that was defense-oriented, that, that does struggle to score. And, and when, when we score in the Southland Conference, it's usually off forced turnovers. And, and even when you take the ball away from Texas, like we did 23 times, you're, you're not going down for an easy layup every time. You know, so they're going to come back and defend you in transition. So uh, the nine-point lead one minute into the second half was, was the only time where it felt like this thing's getting away from us. But the fact that we got to halftime having gone the last 7-13 without scoring and we're only down five, mm-hmm. I think we felt like, A, we let a great opportunity slip away, and B, we're still in this thing. Yeah, and they're not running away from you. And, and that's... You know, that's right. the thing that, that, that I look at. And that's why, I, I look, I don't know. You go play them in the Super Drum uh, down in Austin. I don't know that, that you win uh, half of them. I don't know. But at the same time, I think you proved that you certainly could play with Texas. You proved you could play with Texas Tech earlier in the season. Uh, so I, to me, it wasn't as fluky as everyone else might have. have I would agree. That and and, and that's, that's the only reason, Patrick, that, that I say, I think unbelievable is the wrong word to use for the outcome. Yeah. Uh, the outcome itself was not unbelievable. It was, it was surreal. I, I, I will say that. Maybe that's the same thing. I don't know. But it, I, I, to me, surreal just means the whole experience, the whole scene, mm-hmm. the pageantry. The, 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 we're going to be, I guarantee you, Joe running with the ball, throwing it up, that'll make one shining moment 100%. You okay. know it will. Or something with ACU will make, will make no the doubt. one shining moment montage. So. Um, it, it, and so it, it's, it, it was not unbelievable in that sense that we would win the game. And, um, you know, it, 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 they had just scored 91 points to beat Oklahoma state in the big 12 championship game. And they scored 52 against us. And, um, you know, again, they play UCLA. It, it could be a, it, it, it could be a, a much different story. And I think Texas would have a, would have a great chance to win that game, but, they never got to it. We didn't let them. Yeah. Talking to Abilene Christian voice. And uh, by we, soon. by yes. we, of course, I mean them. Well, I, Brent, I, I noticed, I noticed you forced a few turnovers over there. I saw you, I saw you down there in your defensive stance. Uh, I do want to, my purple sport coat. Right. I, I do want to mention the, the iconic call at the end, uh, you know, down goes Goliath and ACU has the stones, which a is, is fabulous. B is a, Tremendous biblical reference, as well as a great double entendre. It works both ways. I'm curious. What do you mean double entendre? I just was obviously right. referring to David and Goliath. Right, absolutely. I, I'm I'm curious. Is that one that that you thought about? Did you did you have it loaded and ready to go? Did it come in the moment? What give me give me some idea of how that came about? Well, the, I, I couldn't get the David versus Goliath out of my brain. I mean, mm-hmm. just because it, 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 I mean. I, I just think, what would it mean if Northwestern State drew LSU in, in the tournament? Yeah. I mean, uh, maybe that's not even, a, I don't know if it's a great comparison or not, but I just, it would mean, uh, you know, I mean, again, it, it wouldn't matter who you play. If you win a game in the tournament, I mean, Stephen F. Austin beat VCU. I don't, nobody cared that, you know, VCU, it just, it's a, you won a game in the tournament, yeah. you know? So, um but 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 to beat LSU, if you're Northwestern State, would have something extra, I think. And for our guys, you know, half of our guys are from the Midwest, so it's not like we, uh, you know, Kansas and Missouri, and it's, it's not like we're we're loaded with only Texas players. But man, Reggie Miller is from Texas, uh, and and a whole bunch of our guys are 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 from Texas, and they've got friends who they played with who you know play for Texas, and and if you're Abilene Christian, and then you know. Uh, which you know well, you've you've, patron, you've patronized many of our our barbecue restaurants. Yes, we're three hours west of Dallas, and we're a bit in the middle of nowhere. 
uh, and, you know, and to, to go up against the board. I mean, and really, while Texas uh, doesn't have the cachet of Kentucky or UCLA in terms of men's basketball, in terms of NCAA athletics, there is no bigger brand. I mean, Alabama obviously is up there. LSU is, is, in, is in the conversation, Kentucky. But there's no bigger brand if we're, if we're strictly talking dollars and reach well, and all of that. Grant, there's nobody, nothing bigger than the University of Texas. Nobody, no, no, uh, ESPN didn't spill $300 million for another school to have their own network. It was the Longhorn Correct. Network. So, yes, that, that they definitely – it means something. It, it does. And, and so um, – yeah, to, to for, for our small school, a, a Christian college of you know south of five thousand students, forty eight hundred students or so. You know, it's brand new to Division One, relatively. You know, three years eligible for the tournament and to have been twice, to gotten blown out the first time, and then to come back and and if you told me you could you could have beaten Kentucky or you could have beaten Texas, I would take Texas only because uh, and, and and I think Northwestern State's in that same boat. Um, it, College athletics is such a behemoth on the on the high major level, and in some ways, it's almost like some athletics departments um, are their own entity separate from the university. But for places like Northwestern State and for Abilene Christian, you are trying to attract people to get to know your university because you believe that your university has something to offer, not just basketball players, but a business major or a, a nursing major or a you know, a, a biologist or a teacher. And, and so as we try to compete with SMU and Baylor and TCU and Texas for students, a night like Saturday night is enormous. And here's the other thing that people like you and I think about, I think, that being TV guys, we were not only the last game to tip off on Saturday night to end the first round, you may know better than I do, we had to have been the only game still going for at least 15, maybe 20 or 30 minutes. Yeah. I mean, like there was no other game even going uh, and certainly no other game that was close. I think the BYU UCLA game, you know, that was an 11 point win for UCLA. I don't think you know, the point is everyone in, in, and we're all like this as basketball fans. It's the last game of the night. You don't even care who's playing. You just want the game to be close. Right. And if it's a 14 playing a three, you know, if your bracket's already destroyed, as as many were by that point, you're just saying, let's have a close game and let's see if David can beat Goliath. So that's a long, uh, typical long-winded answer to mm. say, I couldn't help think of David versus Goliath. And so I had the Stones idea rolling around in my head. And then sure enough, it came down to the end. And, and you know, and, and right before he shot the free throw, the last one, I said, does he have one more? Does David have one more stone in his sling? Yeah. You know, and, and uh, he, said he it made well. it. And, it was incredible, I mean, man. Was and a, you know, look, you've been there. A, that, brother, you've been that, there. Was a, that was a professional. That was a professional setup all the way around. You you mentioned the sling with the stone, and then you paid it off with the line at the end after it happened. I mean, brother, that's as you know. That, that's what that's what you dream of as a broadcaster, getting that kind of. Well, off. man, yeah, and I think about you were you were what you're about fourteen years old. Yeah, when, I was, when I was twenty nine. Northwestern State beat Iowa. Yeah, twenty nine. Uh, how, how old were you? Twenty nine. Okay, twenty nine. Yeah. I mean. 29, and, and, and you think, have I had my greatest moment ever yeah. at 29? And, and, it, it's, you, you, and, and you can appreciate this. Um, it, ACU is spoiled because you, you, you called games when we were not very good. Mm -hmm. And you remember. A lot, so my son, my second son, is a senior at ACU. And, and he's a huge basketball junkie. He, and now he knows this because he's been around the, he grew up around the program. But his, his classmates who are seniors, all they know is ACU being great in men's basketball. Yeah. We were 16-16 his freshman year, then we go 27-7, and seven, then we go 20-11, and 11, and now we're 24-5. and five. That's all they know. So they don't, they, don't real, they don't remember us losing by 61 at Iowa you know, a few years ago or getting our hats handed to us by McConaughey and the Demons a few, you know, for a couple of times in a row. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 they just don't remember it. And, and so that's why Joe... Joe, you know, at least when he looks across the court and sees me, he, he knows Joe Golding. He, he knows that guy was with me when, when we weren't winning many games. And, and, it, and nowadays, most people, um, all they know about ACU is that we're a pretty good basketball team. And, and we, we remember when. Well, I want to tell you uh, that, and I, I mentioned this on Twitter. I was kind of Twitter barraging 
Uh, I was watching the game uh, with the sound down uh, as I was driving home from Natchitoches after our football game against McNeese. Probably not the safest thing I've ever done in my entire life, but it's I-49 at night. Nobody's there. So I'm, I'm watching hey, the yo, game. YOLO. Yeah, I'm watching the game. I'm listening to your call uh, because I have the ability to listen to Abilene Radio terrestrially from Shreveport. Right. right. Telepathically. Right. So, uh, <laughs> so I'm listening to your call. I'm and. You drop the line. I'm loving it. I'm I'm going crazy. I'm having the, a blast. And then I I came upon the thought, Grant, that you and and three other Texas schools are leaving for the WAC, and Central Arkansas is leaving for uh, for the Atlantic Sun. And all I can think is, y'all were kind enough to donate a little money to the cause on your way out the door. You gave us a unit to 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 have for the next five years. So hey, I just want to thank you for uh, for leaving us a little cash on the way out. Well. It is more blessed to give than receive, <laughs> and uh, and 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 that was my that was my I, I think my crowning moment for the, for the week was just that that somehow uh, when I saw that that uh, that discrepancies I think it was that the uh, Action Network maybe came up with the idea that or they had the nugget that the biggest disparity in athletics budget you know were in, in a first round matchup was Texas versus. Abilene Christian, two hundred million dollars annually, and Abilene Christian, twenty million. And so I just said, "Blessed are the poor." And then, uh, you know, being a New Testament guy, the the beatitudes that Jesus delivered on the Sermon on the Mount, somehow you can make beat tu. And for I don't know if everybody in Louisiana knows, but if you really want to make a a UT fan mad, call them tu. Yes. So you know whether you're Texas Tech or A and M or whoever, you say go beat tu. And so we had. You know, you can you you just you you capitalize beat T U and you got beatitude and and um, it was it was uh, you know you, you've been there you, you you had an unbelievable call you know as a young dude in the business and and it's uh, the main thing is you want you is you want this thing to be able to live and to not have screwed it up and you just want it you know you, you, again we we have nothing to do with the outcome uh, at all but we we are in a weird way, ways in which people, fans connect to the programs and you just want to, you want to do right by them, you know? Yeah. Well, and, and tough for you, brother, you, you get to move on and call some golf and then head to the masters in a couple of week, I, weeks. I hate it for you. It is tough. And as, as I stare out at the Pacific ocean from my balcony, uh, at the park high at Aviara in Carlsbad, California, I can tell you it is, it's a grind, man. And, uh, and so now it's on, as Bill Belichick said, you know, lost to UCLA, it's on to Carlsbad for the well, Kia Classic beginning Thursday on Golf Channel. And Michelle Wee makes a triumphant return. I just saw her in the grocery store just down the street. Her dad, BJ, was there with her. She has a baby now. You know, she's married to Johnny West, the son of Jerry West. So a little basketball tie in there. There you go. Look at you just tying it all little, together with a bow. I'm telling you, it's I'm, yeah. you know, that's that's why you're the best. It's, it's ex- I exhaust myself. And then just you be glad then, you get to hang up, and I never get to hang up on myself. Then that's you uh, the then you head to then you head to Amen Corner coming up uh, in a couple Hello, of weeks. Friend. So, tough, yeah, how about that? And so life. yeah, they, they they gave me a little plug for that Masters Live Amen Corner, and uh, you know we'll be there keeping everyone company for four days, showing you holes 11, 12, and thirteen, and. And uh, we'll, we'll do some golf. Well, I will say. I, I don't imagine I'll bring a David Goliath Stones reference out no. at the Masters at Amen Corner, but it is an, it is kind of a biblical, spiritual vibe at Amen Corner, you know, for yeah, Abilene it, Christian. It guy. literally says Amen in it. So it really does. I mean, I just, I'm, not, it's, I'm just reporting the facts. Yeah. Well, look, uh, all I know is Rogers. Hinton, what is Rogers doing in there? He's giggling I mean, in the background. He's cackling like yeah. a like a hyena. That's I what can, he does. Which he actually means, was, which means it's Tuesday. He actually was. Uh, he was actually sending some very uh, unChristian words at you when you were describing looking oh, at the Pacific wow. Ocean on your balcony wow. Wow. in California. Well, so you know what? Not hey, happy. his view we're, of I twenty is yeah, lovely. It, we're not hellfire and brimstone at Abilene Christian. It's all about grace and forgiveness at Rogers. You're forgiven. Well, go and sin no more. Thank you, Grant. How many Our Fathers and Hail Marys do I need to do? <laughs> hey, we kind of had a Hail Mary the other night. There you, know you what, go. Prayers get answered. There you go, well, Grant. Roger's view, you, Roger's view of I-20 is not quite as good as your view of the Pacific Ocean at this point. Hey, has its moment. Brother, you nailed it. It was absolutely fantastic. Thanks, uh, look forward to get that thing out on the internet so we can all share it and love it because everyone, when I quoted you, on Twitter, 
everyone just exploded and said, that's awesome, amazing, we need to hear it. So get that thing out on the internet yeah. and let's hear it so we can, we can all celebrate it. And congratulations. Obviously, you know, we're going to get Joe, uh, we're going to get Golding on here before too long because he, he's the best as well. But, brother, congratulations, man. Thank you, pal. Appreciate you guys. Talk to you soon. Grant Boone, voice of the Abilene Christian Wildcats.